Mr. Steiger. Here. Mr. Lewis. Here. Mr. Roth. Here. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the June 26, 2023 meeting. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 7 0, Mr. Here. Lauer. Next item special reports. There are none. There are none. Okay. We move on to audience comments. This is the portion of the meeting where any member of the audience can speak for up to five minutes on a non agenda item. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak? Good evening, Ann. Ann. Hi. Sorry I wasn't here last week, but I had something I was planning myself, so I had no time to come. Um, but the reason why I'm here tonight is I want to, or why I'm speaking tonight is I want to um, address the community day that we had. And I would have spoken about it at the last meeting if I had been here. Um, I've attended many community day events, and I really feel that the township, now I don't know who makes the decision about you know how it should be laid out for the vendors and everything, but I really think they you missed, if you're part of that decision, you missed a great opportunity to premiere the new park, okay? Because you had a squash down there on the road and it was like a big funnel or a big chute, may I say, and um, you know, it, thank God it wasn't a uh, steamy, hot day because we would have baked on that asphalt down there. We really would have. So I don't think that good judgment or planning was um, given to how you set up the vendors. But knowing me, you know, I just you just can't take my opinion on that now because I do do surveys, as you know. So I did walk around and I asked a lot of the other vendors how they felt and they did not like it either. Now, if no one else has come forth to tell you that, then perhaps they just don't want to get you mad at them or something, okay? Um, but I have nothing to lose to tell you how I feel. So I'm just saying that I had a lot of people tell me uh, their dissatisfaction with the setup. Um, I think you need to take into consideration too that in the years past, you had a lot of people who owned like fitness centers who participated or chiropractors, and I kept walking up and down, and they were not getting much business. And I think it's because, now, with all due respect to anybody who is overweight or whatever, you know, if you're overweight and you want to talk to a fitness person, I mean, you don't want to do that out in front of everybody, okay? If we had been meandered up into the park, people can disguise their walk over to a fitness center or just to say hi and maybe not have their neighbors see them talking to those people or whatever. But uh, we had a, um, a booth next to ours, the uh, fitness center that's up at the crossroads. He had three people come over to his booth and sign up, okay? And he he was really disappointed uh, because he wasn't having any customers at all come over. Uh, plus, I think that the way that it, and, and I would hope that you all were there so you could see how the setup was unless you were on vacation. But with it being like a chute going down the road, um, it's like getting clogged up, you know, because people are trying to go through and then they maybe wouldn't stop at a booth because oh what's the, you know I'll just keep on going because it just was getting too clogged plus I think you know I don't know what anybody was thinking when they set it up that way where were people supposed to eat you know there was I saw one booth that had like little baby chairs for people to sit on. I mean, it was ridiculous. Plus, when it did rain, and it rained three times on us, us that day, you had pavilions up on top of that hill that people could have gone under. We were letting people come in under our tent 
to get out from under the rain. So it just wasn't good thinking. I think we could have done better than that. And I think that, you know, I would hope that for the years to come, I don't know what reason was given for not wanting it to be up into the park. I don't live that far from the park, but that was my first time up in the park, okay? Because I'm too busy of a person. I can't do my walking up in the park. So I have to do it in my activities that I participate in. So I, I'm just saying, I think that better thinking has to go into it for next year. And I just think it was a, a, a poor thought, especially to those businesses who all these years have really participated in the community day, and they they didn't get much business. And you need to consider that. You had other people there that were new, and maybe they got business, but I don't know if that's what you want. It's, so you have to think, what are you going for here? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shainer. Anybody else? Some... I'm sorry, I can't stay. I have something on the trip to go. Okay. You know, Paul, it might not be bad to, to maybe uh, do an exit poll, so to speak, and see what people thought, what well, you know, thought. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think she had some valid points. I talked to her earlier this week, mm -hmm. and um, I ran into her, I think, up at the courthouse or something. But, you know, there was no place to sit and eat. Well, and again, it's the first year at the new park. Um, the, um, the committee that organizes that is meeting uh, as a follow-up to it. I think one of the things that she suggests is probably a good idea is that we ought to reach out to those vendors and ask them what we can do to improve their situation. So okay. I, I do think one of the things that is intended to happen, and I think it will improve the thing, is to incorporate the, the lawn area into community day. So. Please feel comfortable. Four. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hello. I know. I can. Microphone's working. Oh, okay. Well, we need to move. Okay. <laughs> okay. My name is Anne Marie Wifker. We live in 139 East Edgewood in a house we bought in 1968. And I have a problem that begins, it kind of begins with everybody, because we all know the problem that we have had with, with deer in many shapes or forms. Um, now I think they're ready to move in with me. <laughs> my, uh, my next door neighbor feeds them every night. Oh. They're like his cows. I mean, he, he stands with corn and all kinds of stuff and he feeds them. And the result of all this eating results in them just desperately needing a bathroom. So they use his backyard and it wafts over to our area. Uh, First we stayed inside because of the Canadian smoke, and then that cleared up, so we said, my, my son doesn't live with me, but he's extremely helpful and comes over in, in the evening after his father died. He's been very helpful. <laughs> I get extra points for being old. <laughs> so anyway, this has gotten to be a real problem because we sit outside and depending on how the wind turns, we get this waft of oh, their toilets right in our faces. And I don't think that's fair. I'm an animal lover. I never invite any of them to, for dinner, but I, I, I pity the, the animals because we're taking the habitats away from them. So my question is, is couldn't anything be done to, to prevent this? I, th I think of the, it isn't just the deer. Deer brings ticks. I have a dog who gets a gets medication every month. But I could get I can get ticks. I know somebody who had uh, what's the disease again? Lyme disease. Lyme disease. Lyme disease. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I had to call the police on the fourth of July because we couldn't sit outside because the smell was so oppressive. Mm. Um, we went inside, the door was open, we had to shut the door and turn on the air conditioning. Uh, we called the police and he told us to go to section 274-5 of the Code of Ordinances. There's a copy of the police report right here. Yeah, what he, I think what he's pointed you to is the council has the ability, um, uh, and there's a 
process behind this okay uh, to, to declare something to be a nuisance Correct. there is not in within our code of ordinance right now okay a prohibition against feeding animals but there yeah. you know, the council has the ability in a very broad way uh, to declare to declare something a nuisance in the township but it's beyond the nuisance it's it also a health it yeah, well, like but no, that's what yeah. but that's what it for the for the purposes of addressing your concern, okay. that's how you can do it. And okay. You can then prohibit that. So, could I, who do I have to present this police report? I have a copy of that already. So I haven't seen it, but if you want to. Oh, sure. Yeah, can't be. Well, Paul, can we send somebody up there to see what that condition is? Because, you know, yeah, you, you, I, I would think that, that, that we could at least send a letter saying they have to clean up their yard and, and whatever. The, that's not right. It's, uh, no, I don't. I, I would agree with you that it is not right. I just don't know that it's a violation of our ordinance to feed animals in one's backyard. It's, it's every day. We had 17 ducks in our backyard for the spring. And there's been turkey back there. I don't know what other kind of rodents and whatnot. He's piling corn in the backyard every night. And they he feeds them by hand. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, my sister was here and she called and there was nothing that anybody could do. I called in the past and there was nothing anybody could do. Um, and I think that regarding ordinances, I think it's time to maybe make an ordinance. Well, that this is because the, the, the deer are there, they, they know where to go. I, well, I, it, it may well be that feeding them part, is a yeah, violation does, of the ordinance, but yeah. when it gets to the point where, you know, deer excrement is piling up in the backyard yeah. to the point where the neighbors can't sit outside, yeah. there has to be. And that has to fall under the nuisance provision. I, I would welcome anybody to come and look. I, I can't guarantee you that the, the wind is right at the time when they oh, come. Yeah. Well, but if it, well, we've had the similar conditions that we've dealt with relative to people keeping horses. And yes. The problem oh, of. Uh, yes. Except there. And got we've got worked on it more before. Land. So after, after it rains and then the heat comes, it gets oh, really, really bad. Yeah. And then after it dries out, it can become bearable for a while. And then repeat the process but it's never been this bad and so. my, my son called him and he hung up on him yeah this is years ago so yeah so. well that was years ago but still so i don't but well, I, I don't know how long i will be staying in the house but i certainly would like to enjoy a summer evening you know without sitting in the deer toilet yeah. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Well, and thank you for coming. We <laughs> realized the chore that that made. Uh, Pardon? We recognize the chore that coming here tonight was for you. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, there was no reason to be nervous about no, it. No, I know. But We're your neighbors, too. So mm -hmm. Thank you. What we will do is, uh, Seth and I, uh, will take a look at this, and we'll give you some direction as to what we can and can't do. Sure. Okay. okay. Um, so do you contact my number that's on there? How does this work? I, I can contact whoever you want. If you want to leave okay. your contact information, sure, I can let you know. My phone number should be on that uh, police report there, so that's fine. Okay. You can have my phone number, too. I'm okay. I, I don't live there. I just uh, This okay. This is your name and number here? That's, yeah. He, okay. mis he misspelled it within the That's phone. okay. But, as long as the numbers are right. Okay. <clears throat> Thank, you. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody? Is she all right with the stairs? Or was She's been using the elevator. the elevator. She did use the yes, elevator? Sir. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Is there anyone else from the audience who wishes to speak on a non-agenda item? Seeing no one, we'll move on to unfinished business, of which there is none, so we'll move into new business. First item, special permit for Always Be Smiling for a 5K walk, run, and fun event on the Montour Trail. So Always Be Smiling is requesting a special permit for a 5K walk run event on the Montour and Arrowhead Trail for Sunday, July 23rd from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is the third annual walk run, um, and it serves as a fundraiser for the, for the organization. Uh, the prior two similar events were held solely on the Montour Trail and occurred without a problem. Um, when they were setting up this event, the organizers were, were informed that the Greer Tunnel was closed for repairs. And so to be able to do a, a 5K run will mean running out to the Greer Tunnel and then coming back and going across part of Arrowhead Trail. So what's before council is really two requests. One is uh, approval of the special event, which um, I'm recommending. The, but the second 
is to grant a departure from the, the Arrowhead Trail uh, request <coughs> policy. Um, the policy requires that, that there be not more than one event over uh, any four week period and the reason for that is that these kind of events disrupt trail usage. Uh, there's a cost to using the uh, to using the trail for this kind of event. In this case, it's seventy dollars. Uh, trail requests must be submitted two months prior to the request. They weren't able to do that because they didn't realize there was a problem. A certificate of insurance is required, naming the township as an additional insured, and a security deposit uh, in the in the amount of two hundred fifty dollars is, is required. So, at least two of those those um, criteria can't be met but it's going to be my suggestion that if you choose to allow them to be on the uh, Arrowhead Trail that they meet the remaining requirements that and that the 5k walk run be done such that the first leg is going out on the Arrowhead Trail and returning back because one of the things that's going to have to happen is the parking lot that's down near the sanitary authority has got to be closed because you can't have runners there with cars backing into them. So my thought is if they, if they did the first leg out to here and back by 10 o'clock, the, the trail could be opened back up again and uh, without um, any disruption to, to, the, uh, to the event. And in the future, uh, I want to uh, explain to them what the trail use policy is so they, they comply with this going forward. So, so there's really two things in front of council. One, do you want to grant them a special permit? And two, do you want them allowed to use the area trail? I'm going to make a motion that we approve the special permit to hold the 5K walk run and fun event on Sunday, July 23rd from 9 to 12 p.m. I'll second that. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 7 0, Mr. Lauer. And then I'll make the motion that we grant a departure from the Arrowhead Trail request policy <coughs> and that they be granted permission to use the, that small portion of the trail subject to the three things spelled out in the uh, manager's report, which is that they comply with the remaining requirements of the Arrowhead Trail request policy. Uh, that they uh, in the future uh, fully comply with the re request procedures and policies and that the 5k walk slash run be routed so that the township parking lot near the sanitary authority plant only be closed from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Second that as well. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 7-0, Mr. Lauer. Next item, resolution authorizing the township manager to sign and submit traffic signal maintenance agreement and, ap and application of traffic signal <coughs> approvals to PennDOT. Yes, um, throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, municipalities are required to maintain traffic signals located in their community. In the past, this was accomplished by having municipalities enter into a separate agreement for each traffic signal. PennDOT has changed that and um, with this replacement of the traffic signal at uh, East McMurray and Thompsonville Road, uh, they're using this as an opportunity to, to, for us to enter into a blanket agreement that covers all traffic signals. Um, it's my recommendation that council approve resolution 701-23 authorizing the township manager to sign and submit a traffic signal maintenance agreement and an application for a traffic signal improvement to PennDOT. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution number 070123, authorizing the township manager to sign and submit a traffic signal maintenance agreement and an application of traffic signal approvals to PennDOT. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Does this seem to be completely non negotiable? That would be correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just, it'd be safe paperwork for them. Oh, it, it, it makes sense. From our standpoint, it makes sense, too. We're not holding on to all these permits. Yeah. All, right. all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. 7-0, Mr. Lauer. Next item, approval <clears throat> for recording purposes of the Winter Circle Consolidation as shown on drawings prepared by Gateway Engineers dated March 22nd, 2023 for Al Nair LLC. Yes. Um, this uh, is the current configuration of property owned by the Winter Circle LLC. They submitted a 
a uh, subdivision to consolidate the five parcels into two parcels. These are the parcels that are located in both uh, <coughs> Township and North Strip, Maine, and this is where the apartment complex uh, will eventually be constructed. Um, what they're doing is combining uh, the parcels together in such a way that all the land owned in Peters Township is one parcel and all the land owned in North Strip, Maine is another parcel. Um, I just want to be clear about something. I noticed that Mrs. Merrill had sent us an email today expressing concern about the development. What council should, I, I remind you of, is that when this became a use by right, approval no longer comes back to council. And that approval for this uh, apartment complex has been granted by the Planning Commission at this point. This is simply a subdivision of land and, and really doesn't have anything to do with how that property is going to be developed. Mm -hmm. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. But I do think that you made some valid points in here, uh, you know, especially uh, the, relating to uh, us get, obtaining uh, information about uh, the renter, you know, we need that landlord tenant statute I, or ordinance to come in it, so it, that we don't miss any yes. earned income tax and all that kind of stuff and we know who's living here yes i think what this what changes here is you now have substantial number of renters and we need to know who's renting right. and I, I just think yeah. overall most communities are doing that because you know you want to ensure that those units are you know have working smoke detectors and all the you know all the bells and whistles which is just a safety thing yes it's a lot easier to do that than have some you know fire over there and have to bring out that big truck and you know all that kind of stuff and i think the other point is um that, that I, I just would want to notice i i tend to agree with her about um and i don't, I don't remember the plan but I, I think that access to water dam road is just ludicrous especially where it's going to be but I, I i think there should they should have to go out in the back on the galley well they could be able to do both and in the case of water dam um, we don't control that PennDOT does and they have to get an hop which i do they have that yet not yet but they're very close to that yeah. well i mean i, I just think it's well, I guess Pendon will have to deal with it. But, yeah, you know, and, and I think there's somebody coming out of there on, trying to make a left there. That, that's just to me insane. In their most recent set of HOP drawings, there is a little bit of available stripe space along Waterdam for a short turning lane. It might not be required, but it would be helpful. Yeah. But then interconnection with Ace is that are we past the point of pulling that off? It, it, it can't happen with the actual driveway of Ace. Um, there's just too much separation there. Too much. Too many issues. We are looking at a pedestrian connection up to the Grande Plaza, though. Could you walk me around the perimeter? I mean, I understand where the school is here, Water Dam, and Ace. I don't know whether that stops at that little corner there. So the top who, right of the right of the red portion, um, directly above that, would be the Grande Plaza. As you move further left. Um, this would be Ace Hardware back here. Uh, uh, this is the boundary with North Strabane, mm -hmm. Galley Road. The driveway for um, the golf course is about right here. And then obviously you'll get further down into North Strabane here. Again, Primrose, and then the intersection of Waterdam and Galley is just off screen there. Well, you started from the hardware store. What What is this line that's running? Right here? No. Well, this one? The, 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 this this V, yeah. I don't know where you are. Who owns that parcel? With Ace Hardware. Do we know who owns it? It's all part of Ace Hardware property. Oh, it is. Yeah. The back area, maybe. Yeah, yeah. They have a, a large That's piece a of property. Space back there. They do. I didn't realize that. Yeah, and their I mean, but their driveway stops off screen you couldn't see it if it even if well, it well, i can't see your pointer either but that's what you were trying oh, to yeah, do yeah. i mean it's up by the north there like their driveway's up here off 19. yeah 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 that's where that piece where's the proposed exit on uh, water dam uh, approximately right. there raise the middle there. yeah that's nothing to do with this problem does anybody want to make so a motion yeah i'll make a motion um Peter Township, we, uh, for recording purposes, the winter circle consolidation shown in drawings prepared by Gateway Engineers dated March 22nd, 2023 for Almire 
LOC subject to the conditions recommended by Planning Commission. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Yep, one more question. The bridge that we repaired, or culvert, whatever, that's just to the south of yeah. Lindenwood, where is that on? It's got to be before the tip of this. Is that by the? Right. I think it's right. Yeah. The parcel starts, Bob. It's right. It would have to be. Yeah, that's right. where that cone when you get down below Primrose. It's, it's right before. Well, yeah, because that's where it goes. If this is the uh, sure. driveway to the golf course, it's right before that. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Mm, that doesn't seem right. Okay. okay. It's not relative to anything that's part of my decision making. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 7-0, Mr. Lauer, next item, approval for recording purposes of the Snyder Consolidation Plan as shown on drawings prepared by J.R. Gales and Associates dated February 27, 2023 for John J. John James, LLC. So this is a subdivision of two lots owned by J. J. Johnson, J. John James, LLC, uh, to be combined into a single parcel. The parcels are located at the intersection of East McMurray and Thompson Road. This That's is the, the site of the, co the Cohen Market. Um, the the intent is with this is to eventually um, build a new convenience store and um, pumps at that location. Um, it's my recommendation that council approve for recording purposes the consolidation plan. I'll move that we uh, approve for recording purposes. The Snyder Consolidation Plan is shown on drawings prepared by J.R. Gales and Associates Inc. dated February 27, 2023, subject to the conditions recommended uh, by the Planning Commission. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yep. All right. This parcel was part of an approved development a number of years ago. It's I don't know that we ever determined if that's expired. It has expired. Long it's been expired. more than five years for yeah. sure. It's been, it was like 2010. Yeah, it's, it's it's a a long, there's no time. pending litigation as a result of it. And we had a lot of comments from residents at the time that that was done. Well, and again, what you're looking at is a plan that will eventually go to the Planning Commission for approval. But the one thing that I told it's Seth, given the visibility of this and the interest of that neighborhood, Neighborhoods, we'll certainly uh, bring it back to council for the purposes of providing um, a review and recommendation to the Planning Commission before they approve it. All right, thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 7 0, Mr. Lauer. Next item approval for recording purposes of the Pasqualini Sweat subdivision is shown on drawings prepared by J.R. Gales and Associates dated May 24, 2023, for Pasqualini and Sweat. So this uh, proposed subdivision uh, would adjust the share of lot line between slots 211 and 313 of the Anthony Farms plan of lots. Um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Sweat are constructing the new home. In addition to the house shown on the building permit, a large covered structure was built. And as a result, that structure, of that structure, the uh, the lot coverage maximum of 15% has been exceeded. To address the issue, um, this subdivision transfers additional property onto that to that uh, lot. Um, okay. This this is uh, was reviewed by the planning commission and, and um, approval was recommended. Uh, in addition to the planning uh, commission's recommendation, it's uh, set in my. Uh, recommendation that the rear yard setback on the southeast corner of Pascadelli's property be adjusted to reflect the 40-foot requirement where it abuts the property. So in that that setback line that runs straight across there, mm -hmm. it needs to be bumped off to, to reflect the addition of land uh, to the other side. The other thing is I think there ought to be a note placed on the subdivision indicating that lot 313R is currently at the maximum lot coverage and therefore no additional structures can be built on that lot so that there's some recorded record of that makes sense yeah, yeah. makes sense I'll, yeah. make, I'll make a motion that we approve for recording purposes the fasco quinelli sweat subdivision is shown on drawings prepared by jr gales and associates inc 
dated May 24th, 2023, for Pasconelli and Sweat, subject to the conditions recommended by the Planning Commission and the condition recommended conditions recommended by the Township Manager. Second. Motion to second. Uh, Paul, do we know, how did they uh, get a permit to build a structure which exceeded the maximum lot coverage? Was that a mathematical computation error on our part or what? Uh, no, it was built uh, in addition to, so the house permit was issued. The covered porch was being constructed. We discovered the covered porch being constructed. They revised their construction drawings, resubmitted them to us. We determined they were exceeding lot coverage. Then we said, well, we're not going to issue an occupancy until this issue is addressed. Yeah. Okay. So the original permit was in compliance. Right. It's <coughs> they just they weren't. Okay. No <laughs> right. Okay. We have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 7 0, Mr. Lauer. Next item change order number one to the contract with ABS Building Systems Integrators LLC for the renovation of the public works garage. So at the end of June, uh, ABS Building Systems uh, began work on the uh, Public Works Building renovation project. One of the things that when they were doing the demolition that they uh, brought to our attention is that the uh, ceiling in, in this area uh, was undulating. And when they removed that ceiling, what was discovered is that uh, this trusses um, had rotted on, the, on that one end of the, um, the structure and that was what was causing the instability um, they um, have stabilized that and what they're what they're asking is in terms of a proposed change order to put a new ceiling in there um, at a cost of seven thousand ninety five dollars uh, this represents a change of 1.9 percent for the original contract in the chain even with the change we're uh, well within the uh, budgeted four hundred and fifty thousand dollars so it's my recommendation that Council approved change order number one to the contract with ABS system integrators for the renovation of the public works garage in the amount of $7,095.15. I'll make the motion that we approve that change order. You're being busy. Well, go, go ahead. The change order uh, uh, number one in the contract with ABS building systems and integrators LLC for renovation of public works garage in the amount of $7,095.15. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Please. You mentioned that they want to repair or are willing to repair the ceiling. Have you excluded how they're going to repair the framing? Oh, they're... Um, could you speak to that? Okay. Yes. So the contractor, when they discovered this, um, first looked at the, uh, the durability of the wood and the rest of the trusses. Um, they determined that it was in pretty good shape, so they ran out and grabbed a couple four by sixes and shored up the, uh, the trusses on both sides uh, of the washroom. Uh, you can't see the other side if you're looking at the picture. It's over by the entryway um, and kind of tightened up that entire ceiling structure. So um, we should be seeing a change order for that work to make sure that the trust is the point in good shape. that this is not addressing that cost this is just for the ceiling that's correct i think we ought to wait till we see the whole thing but whatever okay we have a motion and a second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed say nay nay, nay. five two mr lauer Next item, payroll and bills, Dr. Barosco. Mr. Chairman, I have reviewed payrolls and bills. They're all in good standing order. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 7-0, Mr. Lauer. Any correspondence, Mr. Lauer? Nope. Anybody want to discuss any of the various board or commissioner authority minutes? Anything under miscellaneous, Mr. Yes. Lauer? Uh, I wanted to bring to your attention, um, last weekend was Touch a Truck. Um, <clears throat> nice day, overwhelming attendance. Um, um, and, you know, it's the kind of thing I think the Park and Rec Department does so well, so. This was in Peterswood or up at? Yeah, this is in Peterswood. The other thing is um, Columbia Gas has approached us. They need to do work on a valve that's located. This is Thompson Bill Road 
Eastern Park <coughs> Road, the parking lot the there. <laughs> they need to do work on a valve that's located in that area. We don't get a choice about whether they do that or not. Um, they want us to enter into an agreement with them because uh, just as we use their property, for them to be able to get to that valve, they're going to come across our property. So that parking lot's going to be closed for, do you remember, Mark, how long? Like three weeks. Three weeks, yeah. I'm going to again say that I think we should look into closing that permanently because quite honestly with the additional space we have at Pelopets now and the traffic nightmare that that creates with people cutting out of there and cutting into there, I I really don't see how it benefits. We, we can put, what, 15 cars in there maybe max? Yeah, that's probably that. Like I've always said, it's no different than uh, somebody turning sure. left from West McMurray into the CVS. It just backs people up there. Oh, no, I, that I agree with you. Uh, that, I would agree with that. I mean, I really think we ought to look into closing that permanently, maybe just making a pedestrian access that you can connect down to the sidewalk there. Well, but, how are you going to do that, though? Because what else does they need to get in there? Like, isn't there a oh, gas facility there? Oh, yeah, but the, so how but the they gas can, in? Well, okay. well, we can have a, a gate or something that, that allows them in. But if you're actually going to close it, the best time to do that is when the gas company makes us close it down, we just don't open it back up again. I really think we ought to seriously consider that. Well, why? It's a bad traffic situation. Have there been any accidents? Yeah, they uh, clog up the traffic there horrendously. Yes, okay, that's the problem. It's, it, it clogs the traffic up terribly. What happens, it, it's people coming off of East McMurray Road going to make a left-hand turn in there. It backs traffic up onto to, um, East McMurray Road. People block it all the time, despite the fact there's a sign on the road that says "Do not block." Yeah, but we'll make a like, no left turn there. Don't don't get rid of the parking lot that people we'll use. We make a no left turn on West McMurray in the CVS, but yeah, we do it I, every day. Yeah, I, you'll so never stop a left hand yeah, turn. Yeah, right. I, what about like? Yeah. Didn't we lose spaces down the road because of the roundabout work? Yeah, we'll we will for the next few months. That, yeah. Maybe we but should. We'll if we're going to do that, we should, yeah. But I'm just saying, don't. maybe. We should, if we're gonna, if we're gonna close this, we should wait until after that construction to get done because then you're gonna lose 15 spaces and where are those people gonna park? They're gonna get out yeah. of the outfits. Extended parking lot there or always be smiling. There's an extended yeah. parking lot. Well, there's one yeah. on the other side. Well, the, the, the fact that matters on the trail, there is limitless parking because one of the ways you access the trail is Peterswood Park. Well, Rolling right. Hills Park. It's, uh, Rolling Hills Park. There, I think people go to where they think it's convenient for when themselves was, personally, and that's what that is. It when, is. when this was put in, it was needed because we didn't have the number of spaces we have now. Yes. You know, and like I said, to me, it's just the, there's not been one time during the day I've gone down through there that the traffic is not jammed up because of somebody trying to make that turn across yeah. there. Yeah. I, I agree with with Mr. Arcuri not to do it right now with that parking. You know, removed from well, you're going to lose it right now because they're going to yeah. dig up yeah. for the gas valve. They said like late August was when they were planning this project. I'm not in I favor mean, of seeing it closed at all, but that's... Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know the, enough about that, whether that jams up and how bad it is. I don't know. I mean, the bigger problem now is the amount of traffic yeah. on Thomas Road because everyone's using Bunker Hill as the detour. Well, that's even part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's that's so have we... With. Have we ever thought, I mean, about a traffic light at this intersection here? We actually have one. Oh, we, we attempted that, yeah. And uh, I didn't meet Pendot's standards. When was that looked at? Um, oh, a relatively years recently. Years recently. Years when we did the, inter the intersection years, improvements, three, years, yeah. that widening, that the first look was the, uh, to coordinate a traffic signal here with the other side. And what was determined after they studied it was it would actually hurt the movements as opposed to help the movements and that's why we ended up doing so, but if that was five years ago the amount of development that's gone on in venetia over the last five years and i don't know i'm not a traffic engineer expert but is that something that needs to be revisited well we could do that we could ask mr butler to look at it again i thought they did look at future growth in those when they review plans like that uh, they do Right now, it's kind of a bad time. I, I to doubt look they're going to let you put a light that, within what? As far as that from the maintenance? Yeah, I was going to say 300 I, feet. I doubt they'd actually give approval for that to be used as a as a parking area. Well, not. I mean, 
then we definitely get rid of it. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Highway occupancy permit to get in and out of there, or no? Because mm -hmm. it was already an existing driveway. It was already an existing driveway for the gas company. Uh, yeah, but doesn't that be a change of use, though? I would think. We can revisit the issue later. I just think that's an accident waiting to happen, and there's plenty of other places people can park. But we don't need to decide that tonight. Anything else under miscellaneous, Mr. Lauer? Nope. Anything anybody wants to see on the next agenda? Okay, we have an executive session. Yes, we do. We are adjourned. <laughs>